Stop right there. If you want a relationship, if you're dating or entertaining the idea of starting to date, this is a video you need to watch because I need you to understand these five very important questions you need to ask yourself before you start dating. My name is Stefan Labossier, aka Stefan Speaks, your certified relationship and dating coach, here to provide you with dating and relationship advice. This is going to be for the men and the women. And again, it's going to be the five questions to ask before you start dating. Now, before we begin, as always, be sure to like this video, share it, subscribe to this channel, and comment below. Give me your feedback. What's the question you think you should ask? Now, listen, I know you might be thinking, are these questions to ask them? No, no, no. These are questions to ask yourself. Because I need to make sure that before you jump into the dating pool, or if you have already, that you're well equipped to get the best results possible. And a lot of people are overlooking certain steps or undermining themselves with negative or improper mindsets that aren't going to allow them to see the best out of their experience or actually get with someone who they can have an amazing relationship with. So it's very important that we do our due diligence before we step back out there and start to expose ourselves to the world of dating and relationships. So again, with no further ado, let's get right into it. Five questions to ask yourself before you start dating. Question number one, do you believe good men or good women exist? Here's why this question is extremely important. If you have the mentality that there are no good men or there are no good women, then you are almost without a doubt going to end up with a bad man or a bad woman. You are going to almost without a doubt end up in a toxic relationship. Because if your mind is telling you that good does not exist and you're going to enter into the dating pool, then you're going to entertain and engage with mediocre, bad, and toxic. Because to you, there's no better than this. To you, I might as well accept this nonsense because it's only other nonsense waiting for me out there. You have to make sure you believe the good even exists in this world. This is going to help guard you or keep you away from entertaining people you should not entertain. And I see it happen all the time. I see it happen with people who are currently in a relationship where they rationalize staying in this bad relationship because they don't believe good relationships exist. They don't believe they can actually find better. So why leave what I know for something new that's going to be just as toxic and damaging? But that's the wrong mindset. There are great men out there. There are great women out there. The crazy thing is a lot of people just don't recognize good when they see it. And unfortunately, that's because a lot of people have been hurt, have not healed from their past, and essentially that that brokenness does not allow them to embrace the good when it's in front of them. And so what can happen in a lot of dating experiences is that when you actually meet someone who is good and great, you don't believe it. You're questioning everything about them. They're too good to be true. And before you know it, you will sabotage the situation and undermine your ability to actually have a successful relationship with them. And you will, almost without a doubt, go run to someone else who is toxic because it's actually safer there emotionally because you know the negative that they're putting out and you're expecting that negative when you think only negative exists but someone is showing you good you swear they're setting you up for something really bad so instead you become much more anxious and and, and much more uh, uncomfortable in that situation and safer in the toxic situation i do not want that for you so you need to make sure that you change that mindset first and you believe that good men and women exist before you start dating. The second question to ask before you start dating is, can I make time for them? So here's the other, one of the other issues I'm noticing with so many people. They say they want a relationship, they want that person in their life, but when you actually look at their life, There is really no time and room for that person, at least not in a way that allows you to pour into that person's needs and make sure that you're available for them when they need you. What you're actually looking for is someone to fit into your life and be convenient to you. 
What you're looking for is for them to make sure they meet your needs, but you're overlooking the effort you will have to put forth for them. And that is a recipe for disaster every single time. Now listen, I understand we all get lonely, we all want someone there, but we have to ask ourselves, can we make time for them? Can we be flexible for them? We cannot just expect them to be flexible for us. We cannot just expect them to be convenient to us. Can we work with them and create an environment where we're both getting what we need? And if we cannot at this moment, then stop. Do not move forward with trying to date. Move forward with trying to create better life balance. Try to create room for someone. Now you may say, well listen, I'll create the room when I find someone to put in it. You can't do it like that because the reality is that if you wait for that time, by the time they appear, you'll be scrambling trying to make it work and you may not know how to. You may be too deep in the hole to pull yourself out of it. The best thing for you to do is create time now. And even if that time is not filled by a romantic partner, let that time be filled with me time. Let that time be filled with hobbies and, and passions and pursuits and things that you can enjoy in life. Let that time be filled with relaxation and rest because you need it, all right? And hell, you're gonna need it even when you find them, so you, you still need to create room for that regardless, but at the very least, if you create time and balance in your life now that you can now give to the things that make you happy, when someone that you meet that makes you happy or adds to your happiness, because you got to make yourself happy first, when someone you meet adds to your happiness comes along, now they can slide right in, smooth transition, we don't have any problems, we already have a structure to our life that allows us to have the proper balance to pour into our relationships, to pour our, into ourselves, as well as our careers and anything else we have going on. So make sure you ask yourself, do I have time to give them and this relationship that I desire? The third question to ask yourself before you start dating is, do you believe in real love? So this kind of goes hand in hand with number one in believing good men and women exist. In the sense that if you don't believe in real love, in genuine love, then you will accept things that are falling way short of that. You will accept things that may look like love, infatuation, attachment, unhealthy attachment to be specific, all right, uh, uh, even obsession in some, in some situations, but you will fall short of genuine love because you're not believing it exists, and so you will replace that with these toxic things that will only create more problems in your life. So again, you have to make sure that if you want positive results, if you want to make sure you end up in the right relationships and healthy, successful relationships, you have to believe in actual, genuine love. You have to believe in positive, healthy relationships. And I know it's a struggle for a lot of people because many of you have never seen that in your life. Many of you have no proper examples of healthy relationships. And I would encourage you to go research these things. Hell, if you gotta look at documentaries on love, if you gotta watch TV shows that interview different people, couples who genuinely love each other, whatever you can do to start creating uh, that positive image in your mind and start believing it's out there, I need you to set that foundation first before you start dating. Because again, without it, you will accept the, the imitations. You will accept the things that are actually unhealthy attachments and will only wreak havoc in your life. So make sure you have that foundation there. And I feel the need to mention this for those of you who are believers. You know, I, I'm a firm believer that God is love. All right. And so if you believe God and you believe that God wants the best for you, then know that God wants you to have genuine, real love in your life. And so you have to include God in the process of your dating. Again, this is a side note for those who do believe. You've got to understand that you can't include God in work, in health. But when it comes to relationships, nah, Lord, I'll take care of it myself. Like, we can't do that. You've got to make sure he's included in all aspects of your life because that, again, sets the proper foundation for success in your relationships and ensuring that you end up with the right person and not the wrong one. So now to piggyback off that, 
Number four, the, the fourth question to ask yourself before dating is, do you love yourself? Do you truly love yourself? The last thing I want any of you to do is to try to start dating when you don't have a foundation of self-love in your life. Because again, if you notice, everything I'm mentioning on this list is, is about ensuring that you have the foundation that allows you to end up in healthy, successful relationships. Because when you overlook these things, you will almost, without a doubt, end up in the wrong relationship. So when you don't have a healthy level of self-love, you are going to tolerate people who don't truly love you. You are going to tolerate people who mistreat you. You are going to accept less than you deserve. And that's the last thing I want for any of you. So you've got to make sure you truly love you. Now, understand this. Loving you doesn't simply mean I love who I am, flaws and all, and I'm good. Yes, that's a piece of the puzzle to a certain extent. But loving you also means I want to bring the best out of me. I want to make sure I'm operating at my highest level. I'm reaching for my highest potential. Doesn't mean you're gonna be perfect. Doesn't mean there's not gonna always be room for improvement. What it means is that you are striving to be your best you and that you are trying to bring your, bring your best you to the table when you are dating, which again, will increase your ability to receive the person who's truly best for you. So do not accept uh, mediocrity in, in, in areas that need to be improved. Do not make excuses for your flaws out of the name of, well, I love myself just how I am. If you love yourself, you want to give yourself the best. You want to give yourself a higher level, uh, a higher quality of life. And that means working and addressing those issues. That means taking care of, taking better care of yourself physically, mentally, emotionally. That means making sure that you're not holding on to negative energy. All of these things encompass you truly loving yourself and embracing what you truly deserve. But not just loving yourself, know yourself. Because again, the mistake so many people make before they start dating or when they start to date and get in these relationships is they don't know who the hell they are. And if you don't know who you are, how do you know who belongs in your life? How do you know who you truly match with? How do you know what's truly best for you? You won't. You won't. And by the time you figure it out, while you're already in this relationship, you're going to wake up one day and say, what the hell am I doing? How did I end up here? Why am I with this person? All right. We don't need that to be the case. We need to nip that in the bud from the beginning. So the quicker you can learn yourself and, and get a good handle of who you are, what you need, what makes you happy and what you are willing to provide in a relationship. Because please understand, again, relationships aren't just about what we're going to receive. It's about what we're willing to give. And so you have to understand what, where do you draw your line? What are you unwilling to do? So if you meet a person that you may really like, but they may say, well, listen, I want this, 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 and this. And if you know that you're not that person that can give those things, all right, then we can say, okay, you know what? We're just not a good match. It's not a good fit. It happens. We keep it moving rather than trying to make it work with someone it'll never work with. And that's what happens to so many people because they don't truly know themselves and they don't truly love themselves. So be sure you have checked that off your list and you have that covered before you start dating. And now the fifth question to ask yourself before you start dating is, have I healed and released my baggage? Listen, I know some of y'all are already thinking, you probably see my face right now, you're already thinking, well, everyone has issues. We all got problems. Listen, everyone has gone through some things. Everyone at some point or another has had some issues. Not everyone right now is holding on to their issues. People have healed. People have grown. People have become better. So do not use that as an excuse. Do not let that be your scapegoat. You need to look yourself in the mirror and address any lingering issues. You need to release that baggage and make sure you're not projecting past negative outcomes onto your present, onto your future. You're not holding this new person responsible for something they have nothing to deal with. do with. All right? It wasn't their fault. 
But you're bringing it to them because you have not released it from your past. And now you are sabotaging your ability to have successful dating and relationships. So it is important that you take responsibility, men and women, to heal. Go to a counselor. Go to a coach. Do what is necessary. Get my book, Love After Heartbreak. I had to throw it in because it just, you know, it just makes sense. Get the book, Love After Heartbreak. I have the link in the description of the comment section. It gives you the steps to healing. Do what you need to do, but do not make excuses for your baggage. Also understand this. Even if you want to believe without a, with all your heart that everyone is walking around with some kind of issue, well, then I would still counter that by saying not everyone's issue is going to be detrimental to a relationship. So basically, it's one thing where some people may have an issue with procrastination, but that procrastination is not going to destroy the relationship with the person that they would end up with. However, someone else may have an issue that stems from their childhood that will, without a doubt, directly impact their relationship or directly impact their ability to be with the right person and increase the chances of them being with the wrong person. So again, sometimes these issues aren't about just how they affect us within the relationship, it's how they affect us in who we choose, who we allow ourselves to entertain, how we may become so accustomed to dysfunction that we will only choose dysfunctional people to be with. This is what happens to so many individuals. So you've got to make sure you address these things for your own sake first and foremost, but yes, for the sake of any potential relationship that you're gonna be in. So that you can live life at a higher level. Hey, thank you for watching this video. Be sure to check this one out right here and I'll see you there. Listen, nobody likes to get played. It can be one of the worst feelings to ever experience to have someone play games with you, give you the runaround, use you and abuse you, only to end up in a dead